loud. Hey, Rick, how you doing? Good, Megan. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Here we are again in a sunny and very warm Tuesday here yeah. once again. It's not again. even well, October the, yet. No. The official end of summer and it's almost 100 degrees. I know. Well, you know us right. around here, it's going to be 100 till October. It will be. We're yeah. the only place, like I remember when I um, would kind of go back and forth from New Jersey, you know, and Halloween, you could wear your, you know, Halloween costume to right. school and that sort of thing. But out here, it's like so hot that it's not even yeah. fun to do that. You know, you'll melt inside of your Halloween costume. Yeah, I love the fall time of year. I really do. It seems like it's staying warm later and later. But I've got friends of mine in the, like in Michigan, for example, by, by uh, Halloween, they are like freezing their butts off. I mean, oh, it's yeah. nasty. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks. I'll take this then. Yeah, I'll take this. I'm all in. Okay. So this week, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about something that I know that you're not too familiar with because... Mm -hmm it's not something that you need to deal with. But I right. think that for an educational uh, perspective, that it's important to talk about um, different things that are happening in the market, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So this week I chose the topic. It was my topic this week uh, because I was in the Phoenix area over the weekend and I noticed a lot of um, commercials for a large company, uh, that we all are aware of pretty much great. They're a great technology company and mm -hmm. they are offering to buy your house. If you want to sell your house quickly, they say, no problem. Just pick up your phone, your mobile device. You can log mm -hmm. right in and we'll buy your house right then and there. So I wanted to kind of spread some light on that topic a little bit and mm -hmm. explain how this works. So these are called iBuyers. So they're like instant buyers, internet buyers, mm -hmm. investor mm -hmm. buyers, they're iBuyers. And there's a lot of really big ones that are out there that will buy your house. If you're in a pickle, you need to sell quickly, they'll buy your house. Um, now their advertisements are, I mean, it's pretty seductive, right? Because people don't want to have necessarily an open house, right? Like they don't want to clean the house. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have to take their kids out for the day and their dog and their cat and their, you know, bunny rabbits and all this kind of stuff. They just want to be left alone and sell sure. their house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, there's a price to pay. I don't know, you know, if people are considering when they do this, that whenever there's something in it for you, there's something in it for them. Just like mm -hmm. with my job, of course I get paid for doing my job, but I think it's important to look at all aspects of this. So um, I wanted to shed some light on fees, for example. Mm -hmm. So when you list a, your house with a realtor, typically there's one commission, let's say it's 5%, because that's sort of the industry sort of standard mm -hmm. right now, okay? Right. So let's say it's 5% mm -hmm. and you split 2.5% with the other realtor, you put it on the MLS and the MLS is the, the brain of how all the information gets sent out to every real estate website, you know, Zillow, Redfin, realtor.com, mm -hmm. all these guys get it from the MLS. But the MLS was really created as an information sharing between realtors to say, hey, if you've got a buyer, I'll split my commission with you. Um, and you can bring mm -hmm. them and we'll sell this house together. So, <clears throat> so the commission is typically, it's about 5% right now when the market is mm -hmm. harder and things are longer then of course it goes up and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So guess what? The iBuyers, they have fees too. They're not going to call it a yep. commission fee. They're going to call it some other kind of fee. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that starts at between five and 9% is what the Yikes. charge is. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's like, hey, you're getting uh, charged for this convenience. And so with realtors, as I mentioned, the commission is typically about 5%. And the closing mm -hmm. costs, which are called, you know, title, escrow, transfer fees, transfer taxes, that sort of thing. They're about 1%, maybe a little bit mm -hmm. more, one, one and a tenth or something. It just depends on 
you know, if you have a loan to pay off and that sort of thing. And then there's other variables that come up, right? Like could be termite work or something that the buyer finds totally unacceptable that you're willing to work out with them. Could be some repair costs. Right, Guess what? Right. It's the same thing with an iBuyer. Half the time you're clicking, you're signing. Did nobody's come to your house? Once they come to your house, they might change their offer. Once they right. do an inspection, they may ask for a credit. I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and, and PS, by the way, once you close escrow and move out and they start doing their rehab and that sort of thing, and they put the house back on the market, they list it with a realtor. Okay. Cause they're not stupid. I mean, not that you're stupid mm -hmm. if you do it, but they're not stupid. They know that if you just contact one person, one company to sell your house that you're fishing in a puddle. Just a little tiny right. puddle. Good point. And realtors are fishing in the ocean. And so mm -hmm. in a market where you're getting offers that are, I don't know I, what we're averaging now, like like 30 to 100,000 over asking. Last week, we yes. opened three escrows and two of them were my sellers. And one was 50, one was 100,000 over asking. So, you know, you don't know what something is worth until you put it out there. And yes, it's going to require... Yes little cleanup effort and mm -hmm. that sort of thing but you know yeah, for cost versus reward i mean right and if you need help with cleaning up or touching mm -hmm. up or packing or any of that stuff your realtor will have the resources i mean not everything mm -hmm. in life is going to be instantaneous there's always a process right. and you're not getting out of that process by by not putting the house on the market, you still have to move. You still have to pack. You still have mm -hmm. to clean up your stuff. I mean, you know, so that's, that's really what I wanted wow. to talk about today was the eye buyer. Well, I guess that makes sense because when you, as you, as you described it, if you go to an eye buyer, you're fishing in a small pond mm -hmm. versus going to a realtor, you're fishing in the ocean. Right. Right. And so you're, I think as a home seller, you're really limiting your opportunities to maximize the value of your home. And for what, that's, for what's the trade-off? Maybe some convenience, probably not in the long run. You still have I to mean, do all the, all the usual stuff. I know like a realtor right now, um, right now I have so many houses that are um, changing possession after the close date, three weeks, four right. weeks, mm. you know, five weeks after that I have to get out my calendar and I have to remind myself a couple of days before we got to go hand these keys over, Yeah, you know, right. and utilities, I have to remind them all over again and all this other kind of stuff. And so it's like, you're, you know, if, if you've got a talented realtor, you can negotiate the terms that, you know, work for you. You don't, you don't mm -hmm. have to just, plus, you know what, let's say you do want to do an iBuyer, a cash offer. Mm -hmm. You're, let's say your house is in need of a lot of repairs over the years, things have just done what they've done. Mm -hmm. Then a realtor who is well-connected can all, can get you ca as many cash offers as you want. We can do our own sure. iBuyers, which in that in that case, I would probably say, don't, don't do an iBuyer, right. do a, a, a regular sort of local investor, because mm -hmm. there's a, there's a lot of reputation involved in who you're going to deal with, you know, and a lot of these uh, investor types, I'm not saying like the iBuyers necessarily, but mm -hmm. I find that they were really kind of sandbag you and hold you up while they try to renegotiate while they really do their footwork, because they didn't do it in the beginning, because they wanted to tell you, what you wanted to hear to get you to sign on the dotted line. True, true. But I think it also makes sense when they make these I buyer offers to, to, to home sellers, mm -hmm. they still have to make a profit when they resell the house. They're not doing this because they just are, you know, just nice people. They're running right. a business. Right. right. Hello. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, so they're not going to give you a top dollar and then try to sell it for, they have to make a profit somewhere. Right. I mean, they're, and they're going to make more than just a commission because when you think about the cost of doing all that, and by the way, their marketing is really, really slick, right? Oh, and gosh, it yeah. Makes it sound, it reminds me of the rocket commercials, you know, push button, get mortgage. How cool is that? <laughs> right? Well, that's, Same you kind know, of thing, I suppose. Yeah, I've, I've said this before about some other companies, and I think what, you know, 
and I've dealt with um, some of these big online companies before when mm -hmm. the pandemic hit and right. nobody knew what in the hell was going on. They were looking for help. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, I went under contract with a big company to consult with things and that sort of thing. So anyway, so I uh -huh. see how they work. And, you know, right. a, a lot of these big companies is that they're really good uh, technology companies. They have really great right. websites they there, do. but when it comes they're down, to, yeah, but when it comes down to like knowing what in the hell they're doing, they don't, you know, there's a right. lot of hand they're holding. A tech company. Yeah. They just don't know. And uh, so I would just say, again, if you're not going to call me, if I'm not in your area or I'm just not the realtor for you, Godspeed. But call someone, call a talented, experienced realtor who has been around for a long time and has really great reviews and right. get their honest to, to God advice on what to do. Because, you know, this is like selling your house and cashing out is a really big deal. If you're retiring, if you're mm -hmm. moving out of state, I mean, mm -hmm. this is like, this is it. This is like the biggest asset that you're going to yeah. liquidate you know and don't walk away from cash don't walk away from a potential fifty thousand twenty five thousand dollars more right exactly so yeah that's what i got for today rick good stuff thank really you good awesome you. appreciate it all right cool so anybody if you have any questions about iBuyers, i am here you could message me call me and i will be happy to answer any questions that you have thanks megan